Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new exciting episode of the All New 52 podcast, the show where me, Joe, and my good buddy Caleb talk about comics that we're reading. This week, Invincible. Caleb recommended this week's book. Uh, why did you recommend this week's book, Caleb? So uh, the show, I, well, I was trying to recommend it when the show was coming out. Unfortunately, I did that kind of it has come out in the timeline where we're recording however as faithful viewers know that is in the past yes by usually a quite month. a little bit yeah we're gonna so, be a little bit of a month behind so hopefully the show's ending by the time this comes out so you know the, the show's out mm-hmm. I was trying we have to, not watched it either yes um because i wanted to you know go in blind as much blind as I can, because I know some of the stuff that happens in Invincible anyway. So this is the first four issues. Of, Such a low number for a trade. I don't know why. I mean, maybe there's that's, just a big story arc that starts in the next couple, but... And they wanted to keep it contained or something? Yeah, maybe. It just... When I picked it up, and I picked it up used, so I didn't spend that much money on it, but I thought it was going to be more. Well, it's just one of those things you assume it trades. It's like, yeah, I'm getting at least five issues, maybe yeah. six, maybe yeah. seven if there's a short, fun one. Well, even even the uh, when I got Demon Bear Saga, there are only three issues in there that I care about, but then there are two X-Force issues in the back. And some prelude stuff. Yeah, yeah, so it feels like I'm getting more of this. And there's like some behind-the-scenes stuff in the back here, like some concept art. A lot of intro about uh, don't trust Robert Kirkman. <laughs> But uh, I don't feel like, yeah, I just don't feel like that there was that much meat on the bone with this one. No. Although we're, maybe we're poisoning the well. Uh, yeah, we really are starting off. <laughs> Joe, on what's, a note. what's the, uh, what's the story of Invincible? Invincible is about a young lad, Mark. He is a high schooler and his dad is, he's Omni-Man. He's basically Superman. With the look of J.K. Simmons. With the look of J. Jonah Jameson, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and he's very aware of his dad's life. And he, uh, his dad told him at a young age, he's probably going to get powers too. And it starts off, and he starts developing these powers. And over these four issues, about three months' time, he uh, gets into the superheroing mood. With uh, and there's other superheroes too, his age, teen superheroes, kind of like the Teen Titans of this, the universe. Teen Team, yeah, and uh, just figuring out, figuring out being a superhero with guidance from his family who are well versed in it already. Yes, his dad, who's Superman on steroids, his mom, who is uh, kind of leaguered housewife, but kind of past worrying and just all right, what's for dinner? Yeah. That's something I'll say as a positive here. I like how just casual everything is. The family dynamic is very fun. Like, he'll come in when he first gets his powers. He gets them at work. He's like, oh, I got powers. And then he brings up at dinner and they're like, that's nice. Can you pass the mashed potatoes? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, And I kind of, I think that's consistently funny. And I think that sets up a nice status quo for this universe. So it was getting into this just reading that first issue and how uh not knowing too much about the world i was like is this sky high because i'm down if this is sky high and it kind of is but kind of not at the same time um and i think the show is even more kind of sky high because he has this thing where it's like when am i gonna get my powers yeah i think from the trailer of the show because they have that dinner scene of i got my powers and then they edited it a little differently where it said that's great and yeah. i'm like oh this is gonna be sky high i'm down for that um it's but, not. Yeah, this isn't sky high. This is invincible. Invincible. What what positives did you have, Joe? You didn't say yours. Well, I started off uh, with, you with your family dynamics. I'll throw, I'll throw a couple more in. Yeah, throw a couple more because I got the family dynamics. <laughs> That's um, about it. <laughs> I think Kirkman knows how to write a comic. Like, I don't think, um, you know, I don't think this is as good as Oblivion Song, which he's writing currently. Uh, I don't think this is. Uh, but I'm also at the end of Oblivion Song. Invincible so. has concluded at this point, too, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not doing it. I know the main story is concluded. Mm-hmm. Whether he ever comes back and revisits it, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's 110 issues. Oh, um, that's a nice meter run. Yeah. But I've also only read some of the beginning of Walking Dead. I'd say that's probably a stronger start than this is, too. Oh, he does that, too? Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. 
Yeah, he's written like one of the biggest independent superhero comics and then the biggest yeah, independent comic. So he, he's comic. holding Image together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although Oblivion Song is not an Image book, I'm pretty sure. Oh. I should know. I buy it every month. But um, so I don't think this is like these four issues, not the entirety of Invincible. I don't think these four issues is like peak Kirkman, but much like how we talk about how Bagley just knows how to draw a comic. I I don't think Robert Kirkman could write a comic that doesn't keep me somewhat engaged. So you think you think his writing is really holding you together for this? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying if it was someone else writing, I would immediately tune out. But yeah. I definitely think he brings a lot to this. Okay, because you're also coming at this from someone who's read Kirkman before. Yes. So you kind of you kind of knew what you were getting into almost. Yeah, I mean, this I is didn't. this is very different from the other two books I've read from him, though. That just in genre. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, that. And then. I guess those are my two big positives. I so you ju- you jumping off or. You saying that gives me a little bit of a jumping off of I do like how almost status quo shift it is of. Yeah, we're still going to have secret identities. We're not trying to let everybody know. But they kind of get discovered, and they're more or less like, oh, well. <laughs> ah, shucks. Darn. I like I like how not at the forefront keeping a secret identity is. It, it's, a, it's a very, like, casually superhero kind well, of deal. And in general, he still has a secret identity by the end of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just when this, you know, the villain of the piece is like, oh, it's you too. Sup, it's Hal, Heidi. It's Howdy. basically that, right? And they're like, "Oh, hey, yeah." I, I just, I like how casual it has yeah. been so far with people figuring each other out and the heroes figuring out the other heroes. Like, I knew I recognized you. Stuff's fun. I'll also say I like, um, I like the backstory of Omni Man. I tuned out at that point. I like it because he's such a Superman analog Mm -hmm. and like everything in this is an analog for DC. Um, This felt different and I like that. Now. Are we we jumping into negatives with where you're going? No, this is me knowing things about the series, like knowing spoilers. Okay. And so I don't want to spoil anything, but for people who are fans of Invincible and would have heard me say that, understand i know more than i'm letting on right now i just don't want to spoil it okay unless you don't care then i will spoil it i slightly do and slightly don't uh we'll see we'll see how i feel we'll see if you diverge anything else that i don't think i will but okay because um before before we do jump into negatives i i can see myself liking the tv show better without fully uh showing my hand for this i do think and the TV show only covers what, like 10 issues or something that I heard something around those lines. Let me just say the thing that I was alluding to happens a lot earlier on in the TV show than it does in the comics. Okay. And I think that's a good thing. Okay. Interesting. Maybe I'll watch the TV show or maybe you'll spoil me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm invested too much yet. Well, are we ready to get into negatives? Yeah. So that brings us into one of my problems with this is that off the bat if it wasn't kirkman if it didn't have that casual tone if it didn't have the kind of the unique spin on the superman character background there's nothing here i haven't seen in a million other yeah (laughs) it's very generic you you started praising kirkman uh and i was like I'm just going to have to go for your word on this because I don't know. There's nothing standing out about this to me. I mean, I think his dialogue and all that stuff's good. And I know and I think the individual pacing within the issues is good. I the It's just the storyline itself and knowing where Invincible goes. And I it's it's tough because on one hand, I'm like, if I didn't know where it goes, maybe I would have enjoyed this more. But on the other hand, there's a part of me that thinks I would have never gotten to the point. So how old is Invincible? 2006 is when it came out. Okay. So like semi old at this point, but still, you know, new in the comics world, basically. Yeah. I mean, he wrote this, then he went on to write 
Yeah, 2006. Okay. So I still think some of the ways and writing style and just tropes at this point is a little, little tired even at this point. Like the ultimate universe that existed at this point, it's kind of it's less uh, edgier 2000s than the ultimate universe is, but like... <laughs> Cersei, please do not sabotage my mic stand. But it's the same thing. It rarely stands up as is. But it's um, like it's like the same thing as the Ultimate Universe. Um. Yeah. It's well, it, at least as Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, um, the high school setting of Ultimate. The what I know. Yeah, I would say that. Uh, this this is a. It's more of a DC pastiche, mm -hmm. so I think you get a little bit of a different vibe with it, uh, and I think that that distinguishes it enough from Ultimate Spider-Man for me to say it's its own thing. However, it's easy to compare it to Sky High. It's easy to compare it when did Sky um, High come out? It's right around the same time. I wonder. Uh, I wonder which influenced what. Probably it's e neither. It's easy to compare it to... Sky High's 2005. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's easy to compare it to the billion other past pastiches on the DC universe that exists. And that's just something that I find interesting in comics in general, is when you parody or you homage or you take a spin on a superhero universe, you are never doing that to Marvel. You are almost always doing that to DC. That's true, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's because yeah. DC's characters are older and they're much more godlike. Um, yeah, there's an easier spin you can do. That, but that also means that you're gonna be comparing yourself. Like I have a billion people I could be comparing Omni Man to right now. Yeah. Um, and so I just think that that hurts the beginning of this book a little bit. That's fair. I I had that kind of tired. Uh, I've seen I've seen this before, and I, I like this isn't doing anything to pull me in. And I do think that is on the trade collection. We kind of touched on this before. Four issues is not enough of an investment to, if, especially for a first Why? issue, to try to get an audience. Horrible. Well, and I Horrible. imagine reading it month to month. Even worse. <laughs> yeah, like by the end of this, I was like, okay, I like the tone enough. I like the characters enough. There's enough to like get me to read the next volume. But like, if I pick this up, if I picked up Invincible number one, I'm not sure I will have picked up Invincible number two. No, which leads me to another point. I hate this art. I okay. despise this art, which is funny because I have been talking mad trash about the art of the animated series and how bad it looks. I'll take the animated series art over this. I'm well, way more inclined to watch the animated series art because I think that looks bad, but this looks worse. So here's the thing. I don't like the art either. Um, <laughs> Devil's out of kit, Caleb. Interstage left. Amazon, Amazon's art looks cheap. And it's Amazon, so I know they can do better. Mm -hmm. This is Image. I, know they <laughs> I don't can think do they better. can do better. <laughs> oh, no, I know they can do better. Saga exists. Paper Girls exists. And these these came later, but like... Image has good art. It got started because a bunch of artists left Marvel. Um, but. But. That doesn't excuse this for like looking cheap, looking cheap. Panel layouts get lazy. Pages are the same no thing. No backgrounds. Pages are the same characters in the same spots for four panels in a row. And I get it. It's kind of showing passage of time. Two are the same, two are the same with different dialogue bubbles. That That is lazy, and maybe you're cutting corners on a budget or something. Does not excuse this from just criticism of bad art. I feel so bad because, like, it's invincible. This is held up as, like, the oh, independent I know this is, superhero. I know book. this is plenty of people's, like, super favorite thing. I, I, I don't care. <laughs> If, if it's going to have this rough of a start, it is worthy of bad of criticism. Yeah, and I just and I guess I just want to preface that again. Once again, we are we are criticizing only these first four issues. The art might get a lot better. The writing. I'm pretty convinced gets better just knowing where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think the writing's bad. I just think it's miss. Like, I think the editor could have been like, OK, Kirkman, throw a little bit more in here. Yeah, I <laughs> The art's the only really bad part that I feel like it is a, like a, a sticking point, really. Everything else is just generic, and I've I've seen it. I, yeah. The, this, if you're wanting to be an independent superhero, like you already you already have a big hill to climb. 
starting like this is not a good start. But this is what's fascinating about this book is that it climbed that hill. And it climbed that hill in 2006, which was not a great time for comics. Which, this is to say, again, I'm not, I'm not done showing my hand yet. It's one of the first things you've shown me that I would continue. Okay. Okay, so what is it? What is it that makes you want to continue it? It's not the issue one. That's for, that's for darn sure. Yeah, like I said, I would have picked up which, issue two. Which maybe is being unfair because a lot of the other books you've shown me where you're like, you know, maybe it gets better or, but maybe this wasn't a good start. This is only because I know it has a legacy. This is only because I hear it gets good. So I don't know if I, if on principle, I shouldn't find out more. <laughs> well, and I agree with you. I'm going to pick up the next trade, but I'm also way more inclined to watch the TV show. Cause I cannot stand this art. That's fair. I, and if the TV show is a faithful adaption or isn't like be what it may it's such an interesting little paradox because there's something here. There's something in these four issues that one let made a image want to collect them. Just these four mm -hmm. and two made people want to keep reading this up until the point, And I don't know what their sales were like, but up until the point where it gets good enough. Yeah. That like it becomes 110 issues. That is a 10 year legacy. Yeah. It's an, like, I want to know. And it's like this mystery now, but it's a mystery that would not exist without its reputation. Yeah. And I feel like we're going to be talking more about just like legacy and what that can do to something like this. Because, OK. Retrospective episode time. Um, Saga, you have shown me. Yes. Been going on since 20 er, early 2010. Was that around that time? I think. it was, Yeah. Yeah. Something around that time. Interesting start. Interesting world has the caveat of it's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. It which, is which could, certainly not, which could be typical. a selling point. Kind of took it away for me. Um, so that is what you have to go on. Hasn't had an adaption has a legacy, maybe not as mainstream of one. Well, and it's still going on and it's still ongoing. So, but it was a little too weird for me. Not really my type of genre. Can't really see myself continuing it. You can point it. to specific things that turned you off. Okay, yeah, I can point to yeah. very specific things that turned me off and just why I wouldn't want to continue it. Uh, Sixth Gun. Again, more recent. Um, something I overall enjoyed, though, but didn't necessarily have enough to pull me in. Don't know anything about it. Uh, so not enough to want me to keep going. I'm trying to think of something else you showed me that I was weird that I didn't really like that i hadn't well, really heard of everything oh that you had it heard of yeah i'm not sure i've had anything else um i think i i think everything else i've shown you has been from the big two mm -hmm. but uh you could compare this i guess to um the idw transformers because you I, hadn't yeah. read that idw transformers this is a little bit better of a parallel something transformers itself has a legacy the idw comics have a legacy of being overall good um but again, the comic itself didn't really lead, lend me to anything uh, to really wanting to continue because I was like, OK, it's a Transformer story I've kind of seen before, but there's enough kind of different things like uh, Cybertron stuff that, you know, is new for me that I haven't seen done well or at all earlier. And I'll say for me, at least, and I think this is similar. The stuff that interested me was like reading the Wikipedia and finding out that like after X amount of issues, Bumblebee, like the war is over and Bumblebee goes off into space and mm -hmm. leads his own team like that. I found interesting. Yeah. But, and it's Transformers legacy and I hear, I hear what it's done and how people enjoy it. I'm like, okay, maybe I would be down to continue this. What about a, what about a Judas contract? Because that is, that's superhero, mm -hmm. which nothing else we've talked about. We've used as an example has been, and that could be a big thing pulling you in just as that superhero. Mm -hmm. Um, and it has a big legacy, big legacy and something I enjoyed overall with criticisms of the story that, you know, necessary or not. And that's kind of what we're coming at it for, for this podcast specifically, yeah. um, something I enjoyed, but not necessarily a comic. I would continue at this point just because of the time it came out and that mm -hmm. style of writing and whatnot, but characters I already enjoy, um, something I haven't read yet, but something I could see myself getting into Ninja Turtles. I love those characters. I mean, that's a very specific time period of them. Um, you have nostalgia. I have nostalgia for it. Having not read anything, maybe I could see myself enjoying it. 
Yeah. So... And would I continue from that too? Invincible? I know it's a, uh, uh, Invincible? Pool. Why am I saying that? Invincible. I know he exists. I know people like him. But it did not do anything to make me like him. Yeah. So And like, there's another and, adaptation out there. And there's another adaptation. Or out an there. adaptation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this so is I, an adaptation of anything. Am I ju- ju- I, I suppose I'm judging it kind of unfairly, unfairly. I think I think it has an advantage because yeah, of well, its legacy. So I don't think you're the one judging it unfairly. Well, yeah, it has an advantage, but I, it makes me feel like I'm doing the other two things that I really didn't like, but weren't wasn't even really to give a chance. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, I think I think we're kind of looking at this because it is just, like this is a great example of. As comic book fans, you want to be up on the big things, mm-hmm. right? You want to understand them. Um, even, I want to be able to have my opinion while also being, I didn't quit. Yeah, yeah. And so I think this is an interesting example of that. Because on the page, what we've got here, nothing's really sticking out to either of us. Nope. Um, even the stuff we like. Yeah. But, like, it's just the culture around it is like trying to bring us that is what it. is that is solely what is driving yeah. me to want to continue it maybe even if the tv show hadn't like existed at this point and we weren't trying to do this cross promotional timing thing that didn't really work out like maybe that would have affected my oh man i just i can't care enough to want to continue this yeah so i just i think i don't want to i don't want to come down on like that kind of that kind of influence is a good or a bad thing but it's, I, and it's, it's, it's an it's advantage, an, whatever it's an it is. Important, yeah, thing to understand when you go into this. And I mean, I have this with movies too, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are movies I'll watch just because I feel like I should watch them. Yeah. <laughs> and like sometimes I like those. I love Casablanca. Not a big fan of Sis and Kane, right? So like, it's just interesting. But it's interesting because this is such much more of a time investment than like than a Judas contract, which is one story. Arc. Mm-hmm. It's it's bizarre. And it, it my mind was just kind of racing through this as I was reading it where I'm like, man, this is doing nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is not doing itself any favors. It is. And I don't know. This, this is an older looking trade. So I assume this one's been in circulation. I don't know if they've reprinted it. Maybe better collected things. This whatever whatever they were thinking when they printed it is not doing itself any favors to try to capture new readers which i think is a very important part of trades i've gotten into comics solely because i loved a trade well and from day one we have been talking about or from episode one we have been talking about how you collect a story yes well i guess episode two because episode one was a a one lone story but no because even then we talked about we talked about how it reading it in a trade versus reading it week to week. Yes. So I think that I think that where I'm coming down on this is the legacy is both hurting it and helping it. It's helping it in the sense that now I want to read volume two to see where the story goes to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also hurting it where I had high expectations going in and this meant none of them. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of a prob- problem with legacy, but also maybe make a better collected trade if I, I like, you know, this probably got published like a year into the comics run. So maybe it hadn't even hit its stride yet, but Lord, if you're going to collect something and you think, and you think you, you want it to sell like something, anything, well, but and that's... this has a little retrospective. So maybe it wasn't even the, a first edition printing. This is definitely a second round of printing. Who knows? I mean, and I it's don't also, know. it's also I'm speculating like, at this point with the trade. They know they have an audience for it. It's just, can they grow the audience yeah. now? Can you get those people who only read the trade? To start or, going month to month. Yeah, or, or or came into comics after the trade was done. And to be fair, they got us. Or at least they got me. Mm-hmm. Or because I bought it used, they got whoever. They got, they got yeah. someone. <laughs> and they now got they're getting, someone along the way. And now they're getting another video about it. Because I'm sure, I, I wonder what other people's opinions on this, honestly. Well, I've never I, heard a negative thing about Invincible. Yeah, but I've, I've never heard of anyone just talk about like break it up no i've only never heard, I've only heard, I've only heard i like invincible and that's it well and yeah um 
Yeah, I, I would be curious to go back and see if I could find impressions of this as it's coming out. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only way we could find what we want. Or just a new reader like us. Yeah. I so I, <laughs> I feel and I feel like I'm harping on this a lot. Be, because and it's it's solely because of its legacy and trying to defend myself from like potential hate that like just my bad opinion of this beloved thing hit me, honestly. But um, you have said that the Fantastic Four should be killed, so I don't think you need to worry about still defending stand by yourself that. from hate. I think, I think, I think it's natural for us to feel a little bit defensive about this. But we also just remember, y'all, um, we did both. We have both said that we're gonna, we would at least consider keep reading it. Yeah. Um, and there were things we liked about it. It's you know, I, and this I, is that's that's what I was about to get into. This is far. Far from the worst comic I've ever read. Far from the best comic I've ever read, though. Far this from is the worst a, comic we've read on this podcast. Yeah, it, but such a middle, middle of the road, like, yeah, you're 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 hitting par beats. Like yeah. you are you are doing what a story should do, and I cannot award you for anything else other than that. Um, you you followed the guidelines on this one. <laughs> this is definitely going to be one of the things when I get volume two, I'm bringing it on the show almost. That's immediately. perfectly fine. I feel like we need to have more. We need to follow up. I love a good redemption yeah. story. So well, if, and, if it can pull it through in the second trade, that'd be great. If it's going, if it takes till trade five, good for finally pulling it around. I think it's a little too, too little too late though. Well, and you know, a big part of that, how many, how many issues is in trade two? Should we should, should I look it up right now? Just I'd be to, curious. Just I'd be curious to... because listen, I bought this for like three bucks, right? Which I think is more than worth it. Um, but if I was buying these new, let's see. I'm paying okay, thirteen dollars. That's not too bad. I'm paying thirteen dollars for four issues. If that's I, that's if only I was about paying, a, that's one free issue, basically. Yeah. If I was paying um if I was paying like what a Marvel or a DC sells their trades at, it would not be worth it. Collected editions. And Marvel does sell just oh, four issue trades. Oh man, it is another it is that. another four issue trade. Why? But starting at issue three, it's five issue trades from then on. Oh, and then a six issue trade. No, a seven issue trade. Then, then another six issue. I, I don't understand. Well, they get longer. And now we're just getting into speculation because we don't know what story arcs are in these. Maybe that is just the best way to collect them. And you were wrong. It's 144 issues. 144. It's even more than I said. Yeah. That's a, that's a 15 year legacy. You know, Joe, this is this is I think this is interesting um, because there's just a big question mark at the end of this episode that we cannot answer. There's a big cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Um, And the only way that our listeners will be able to know about that cliffhanger is if they subscribe to the podcast and give us a rating. Five stars. You, dear listener, could be the one to email allnew52podcast at gmail.com and say, I need to hear what your thoughts on Invincible 2, Invincible 3, and up to Invincible 25 even. What um did you have any other points? I just I needed to do that transition. That was that was great. Okay. Um Yeah, I feel like this is I feel like I, I come across as the negative one a lot of the time. Every uh, podcast has a hero in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we have I Wanna Believe in Comics Caleb. We have Burn Them All Joe over here. Uh and maybe I've come across a little bit harder on this than stuff I've absolutely hated. That's that's because I can see the potential here. Yeah, I can. And I can see what I would like here. I I want this to be better. Your criticisms are coming out of hope. But yeah, my criticisms are coming from a place where this isn't me hating the foundation. This isn't me hating where I can see it be going. This is me liking. At the bare minimum, the, the first page even mm-hmm. and just being like, man, I can see what it wants to do but it just completely flopped that launch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, yeah, pretty much echo it. I feel like we are basically in line more than we have been since curse of the white. Knight. Yeah. Um, which is fun. 
It's, uh, it's weird. It's refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> I you, you made some eyes at the beginning where I was like, oh, boy, it's another one where Caleb likes it and Joe hates it. whoop de doo Well, neither of us hate it. Neither, neither of us love it. Yeah. Right? It's we're just... Yeah, you, 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 you could have done better, Invincible. I'm disappointed, son. Great it's, casting of J.K. Simmons in the animated series, though. I, I as soon as uh, I checked last episode, I was like, is that is that J. Jonah Jameson? Man, yeah, uh, man. <laughs> All right, Caleb, I got something for you. All righty. Oh, I wonder if Joe wants me to close my eyes. He didn't say anything. Oh, he's hiding it behind his back. Do you want me to close my eyes? Yeah, close your eyes. All right. Don't open them. I'm not. I you know how this situated. goes. All right. I'm feeling it out. I'm trying to decide. Oh, wait. This feels like every other <laughs> comic in existence. I had a bit before the episode started, but I had already decided on what I wanted to give you. Caleb, I give this gift to you through you giving it to yourself. I don't know what that means. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting to it. This is what annoys me. By my law or yours. This is what annoys me, Joe. So I love the X-Men so much, and I try to space out my X-Men content so that we don't do... So that's not oh, just no, always X-Men. Next book an X-Men book? And now you're messing with it? So guys, we're going to get two X-Men books back to back. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're not into that. All right, we're going to read Ultimate X-Men. I am running low on stuff, and but I technically got Caleb this. He got it for me for Christmas, same time I got him uh, Justice, Justice League, League Power, Power Rangers. Um, I was yeah. hoping this would come sooner, but uh, I, I took matters into my own hands. This also comes with a legacy. A it legacy does. that has kept it on my X-Men shelf. It does. <laughs> unopened i have read the first page okay uh and then i but it was around christmas i had a billion other good comics to read yeah. so so as always uh if this episode if you're an invincible fan i'm i'm sorry uh but please continue keeping up with us subscribing rating us five you stars know, like we said before we're just two future invincible fans here and we're just going through the process imagine the potential in us that we can imagine in <laughs> invincible we're just the small children who you're going to lead into becoming full grown up invincible fans. Next week, we're reading Ultimate X Men. Email us at allnew52podcast at gmail.com with your suggestions, your critiques, your criticism, how much you hate us for hating Invincible. Hey, I don't care. Send me some support for getting through Ultimate X Men. We'll see you next week.